Welcome to day seven of Project Pack 12. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria. And mm. uh, yeah, so I'm going to... Rick's going to be Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going through all the tools here and that we're going to use. So I set some elegance of limits for myself, and that was to use everything that was in, in my toolkit. So there was no limits. So there was like a, a reverse <laughs> limit. <laughs> So the first thing I did was I wanted to put a wash on the back of, uh, or, or across the whole tile before I even began. But on the front. But on the front, right. Right, right. so it'll be like a wash background. Yeah. Background, right. So I'm uh, playing around with some water and just putting in a little bit of, of the gold. and uh, Just to add a little shimmer. Just to get some shimmer. So now I'm going to uh, just cover the whole tile here. I'm using a, uh, a Phi tile, Phi Renaissance tile. Right. And I'm just... Are you going to have enough paint? I don't know. <laughs> no, I probably so would have I was made wondering, more. <laughs> well, it absorbs the... It absorbs I it. Really, it's I thought awesome. I had way more than enough, but it is just the right Look amount, at that. Right? Perfect. But you could always make more. I could always make the, more. Uh, the gouache is very forgiving in, in that it rehydrates yeah. when you go near it. Look at that shimmer, how pretty. It's really beautiful in, right. in person. And so I let it dry overnight. So just, just so you know, I probably didn't have to let it dry overnight, but I did. So I am going to get way back to basics and do a very um, early tangle. And this is Paradox. You're using your black 01? Yes, I'm using the black 01 on this toned gold resonant, toned gold renaissance. And the way I begin is I'm going to make a triangle. And within that triangle, I'm going to make many, many smaller triangles. And the way I do that is I'm going to draw from the point down to the line but when I hit the line, it's just a little bit further away. And then I rotate my tile, and from where I ended that line, I do the same thing. So I'm taking off from the corner, and then I'm landing sort of like almost, you know, right onto that line. So if you look at this now, you'll see there's a slightly smaller triangle within the first triangle, and it's rotated just ever so counterclockwise. So I'm going to now keep doing that over and over and over again. So starting at each corner where I finish the last stroke, I turn the tile and continue. You could imagine uh, doing this without even lifting your pen off the paper. And if anybody is into long arm quilting, you will realize that you could do this all in one stitch. But look at, look at this. We're starting to see that gentle curve form, right? And this is the reason that we named it Paradox, because only using straight lines in this sequence, you have this lovely, lovely, gentle curve that increases its curve the closer it gets to the center. And I turn my tile each time, uh, both for consistency of stroke, and I've thought that I knew which direction to drew, draw the line many times, and then realized after I thought I was, I wasn't. Beautiful. So that is a paradox. Uh, and you can also use it as a fragment. And in some ways, we're, we're using it as a fragment here as well by drawing another triangle. So I'm going to sort of imagine an equilateral triangle. But I'm just imagining it. I'm not uh, getting a ruler or anything like that. So I will create another triangle. And now I have an option. I can do my paradox just like that one before, 
or I can mirror it. So in this case, I'm going to mirror it. I'm still going to start from the corner, but I'm going to the other side and rotating my tile and just doing the same thing, stroke after stroke, rotating my tile and finding a comfortable place for your hand. So I haven't uh, moved my hand. And when I meet there, I play a game sort of when I'm doing it so that that stroke meets like as a mirror image, the one opposite it. So just keep going and going. And as you're doing this, again, that uh, gentle curve forms. But what's happening is you're losing that demarcation line of where was the first triangle and the second triangle. And you're developing this really beautiful meta pattern. So there's that what is that shape? You know, is it like a a, a frond on it's a tree? It's very pretty. Or a, it right? looks like something like a, a palm, palm tree, tree right? right? So no longer do you see two triangles, but you see this beautiful diamond shape with these very gentle curves and light and dark inside. So I was going to stop there, but I want to show you what happens with doing another one, but having it rotate in the same direction. And let's see what type of meta shape we get in when these two are together. And you'll understand in a sec. So I'm going to not mirror it, but I'm going to do it in the same way. I'm going to start in the same corner relatively as, as the one we just did. But it's not the mirror, it's the duplicate. And you can always rewind and, and check it out. So we're going to do again the same thing, dot to line, dot to line. And again, we get that beautiful curve. But what but happened? What happened? It's to going the in the other direction, or it's going in the same direction as the previous one. And the meta shape is entirely different. You know, what, what is it like somebody like wringing out a striped washcloth, or, you know, is it a, a muscle? Uh, it looks like a column of some sort, like a. Right? like a column in the building. So you can see the two different meta shapes. And then I decided I didn't want to have a trapezoid. <laughs> what? What's wrong with trapezoids? Well, I, I like, well, I wanted to have something else. So I'm going to put another one in here. And I don't know, where am I going to put the dot? doesn't have to be an equilateral triangle. You can see how we, we, we build these on the fly. Yeah. and <laughs> We and all do it. <laughs> We want you to get that message, like even though Maria's style and my style are not the same, we're still approaching this as a you know, work in progress, not just to, to duplicate perfectly something that, that we did before. And to be able to respond in, in the moment, like, oh, well, you know, this wasn't what I planned, but this is where my inspiration is taking me. So I decided to create, shift the direction so that I would end up with a, that first uh, meta shape similar to the first one. And I like the back and forth now of, of this, right? Beautiful. <clears throat> so, so it's a good example of, the, of what's going on. So I am getting my brown pen, and I'm going to just go around this and create an aura. And I'm sort of keep having a sense of the aura being about the width of the largest part of where those lines, you know, where they are at their largest. Not, not obsessing about it, but... And then when I get to this really sharp corner, 
there's two ways to do it. You could go around it like a, a radius, or you could actually make it so it's like straight lines where they would meet. And it's often further away than you think. It's harder to do it that way. It is yeah. harder to do it that way. And we'll, we'll play with that uh, in the next one. I remember doing um, uh, lines on mats when we were doing framing mm. and trying to uh, guess where that corner yeah, yeah. is, you know, French lines. I like the, you know, we talk about contrast, and often that contrast is in light and dark. And we're going to mix that a little bit on this uh, tile, but I'm thinking also in contrast of color. So we have the black and the brown. And here we're starting to move from straight line to round line. So on these, this aura, which I'm making big enough, a little bit bigger because I'm going to put some orbs in. When I get to these corners, I'm going to make them round like a radius. So we're transitioning from this very straight line, straight black line, through into a, a brown, and we're going into a rounding curved line world. I'm going to go and put these lovely orbs in. And when I do these, and I learned this from Maria and Molly, is I overlap the bounding lines and the adjacent orbs. So they're really pushed as big as they can be. So now we're getting a little contrast in uh, both color and shape. And I'm going to go in and add some contrast in light and dark by filling in all those little interstices, those little triangles around the orbs. It sounds like it would take a long time, but it's actually a very lovely meditation. And it doesn't take that long. Yeah. Um, don't uh, stop yourself from doing these little tiny details. Um, it's all part of the whole thing. So now I'm going to really go into the, the curving world and uh, using flux. And flux are these, at least the way I do it, are these leaf shape or teardrop or raindrop shapes. And I really play around with the takeoff and land. And I'm, in this case, deciding not to overlap any. And I'm going to fill the balance of this, uh, or most of the balance of this outside, with interlocking flux. And as I do it, I try to leave some of those triangular shapes, or some shapes in between, because we're going to come back and fill those in a very fluxian sort of way. Fluxian, I fluxian, love that. Right? Is that, is that a Renaissance term? It is. Oh, okay. uh, it's specially, um, it's really only supposed to be used when you're using Renaissance paper. I see, but, uh, I see. I, I think we can uh, use it in any way. Fluxian. Fluxian. Hmm. So I'm really having fun with this, and none of this is planned. Each one is inspired by the, the spaces that are near it. And I love making these, uh, these forms and just touching the various edges. And it's a real takeoff and land exercise. You can see it's like, okay, no, not there, not there. Let me go this way. Okay, so we've, we've got some uh, those flux forms. And the way flux has evolved when I do it is I put these little lines in the middle of it, sometimes a dot, and it reminds me of like the, the main vein or part of a leaf. 
that's going down the middle of it. Like a little fold. Isn't that, what's that, purslane or something? Right, so it, it reminds me of, uh, it's a very small herb called purslane. It's kind of fuzzy and soft, right? Yeah. yeah, it's a really nice herb, used to grow it. So now we have those uh, set up, those leaf forms, and now we're going to go in, pardon my finger there, but I'm going to find the largest orb that I can put in a space, and then the next largest orbs, and I keep filling those spaces up with whatever's left with the largest possible orb that I could put in. So I find the largest area, put in a big orb, and then that leaves some other places. So like I'm going to put an orb in here. Now I've got like three triangles. So how many can I put in? I just fill it up as much as I can. Sometimes you might only be able to put one. Here's a really big space, right? So now we've got, okay, I could put one there. And the neat thing about Zentangle Art and this pen is this pen has all different sizes of orbs in it. So you have any size you want at your pen tip. And you just What's pick that, that one. When, when you're, you're taking a shape and you're putting it in um, different sizes and stuff with it. With uh, the, the fractal? Fractal. It yeah. has a very fractal look to it. So I want to have some orbs in the outer space, so to speak. And just going to fill that in appropriately, not in every one, but every now and then that makes sense to me. Maybe I'll do none. Maybe I'll do one or two. So you'll see I'm skipping some and doing a small one or a bigger one in different places. And similar to how I did that uh, orb border, I'm coming back in and uh, filling the interstices. And it gives that nice uh, light-dark contrast here. And like Maria, Maria said, it, it, you'd think it would take a long time, but... But it doesn't. And it's very pleasant to do. It's sort of like a, a fun hide-and-seek to find all the little ones and fill them in. Invariably, I'll find one that I missed when I go and uh, shade. So, so there we go. So on the center part, I'm going in and adding some graphite. And the approach that I'm taking here is where the lines are close together, it's already a little darker. So I'm going to emphasize that darkness by adding some graphite. So I'm working with the pattern, uh, even though you might think, well, it goes under the other part. But hey, this is we can we can do. Uh, take whatever approach we like. Now smoothing that in. Nice. Or, that looks nice. Right. Just and you're just like inviting the graphite into the fibers of the paper and just gradually letting it. Um, paper into the rest of the pattern. I think when I started out, I had really good intentions of keeping my tortillons straight. And <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like the dirty tortillons. I use them all the time for different things. Right? Yeah. Oh, and the, the Magic General's chalk pencil. Oh, yes. So now we're going to add some light. And I'm I'm tentatively playing around with ideas of, of how I'm going to do it as I do it. And the beautiful part of this is you can go back and add and mix and match. And so I've put down on the lighter areas where those lines are further apart from each other some, uh, some of the white using my tortillon, using my finger. And um, smoothing that out, cr 
creating some highlights and just responding to what I've done because as I'm doing it, I'm thinking, ah, it's almost where I want to go, but I, I want more. So I think what I end up doing is grabbing my, uh, right, so I'm going to add some more white here. I want more of that, you know, light and dark to the point that you almost don't see the paper on this. Okay, so now I'm going to add some brown chalk, <laughs> but I really like to have my, like, golf-sized pencils. So only Rick <laughs> would do. He's uh... So I got my little Leatherman on, and uh, opened that up, and I'm going to saw my pencil in half and uh, sharpen it. And uh, we're using this uh, sort of larger pencil sharpener because it has an angle General's made this just for these chalk pencils. So it has a, 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 a not as, as fine a tapered point because the chalk is not as strong. Just so you know, you don't have to run out and get a saw and chalk. You, do, <laughs> you could actually do it with some snippers right. or, or not at all because Rick just likes to hold it into it, the palm of his hand. Right. Um, he's just Rick being Rick. <laughs> <laughs> He just happened to have a saw on right. him at the point in time. <laughs> so I am doing a couple things here. I'm, I'm making the, it look like those uh, leaf ends are going under the other ones. And when I have the extra uh, chalk on my tortillon, I'm sort of putting it over the, uh, the orbs around it so to just sort of make the ends of those leaves pop up even more. And maybe just add a low light on the really big ones there. And again, very light touch. Okay, so we're getting there. So now we can go back in and I'm using my white chalk. And I'm just laying down some dollops, right? Is that oh, a good word? A dollop of white chalk. Dollops of white chalk, because I know I'm going to come back in with my tortillons. What, what else are dollops? Dollops of uh, pancake frosting? batter. <laughs> <laughs> Frost. oh, frosting was frosting. good, yeah. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> right? <laughs> and I'm blending the two chalks into each other there. Okay, so now I got my gold. Now this is a little more intense gold, right? right? So yeah. I, I really uh, used a, a much, uh, much more of the gouache in there, not as much water. And I'm going to frame all of this and I'm using that point, just really pointing it right in there. It's a great brush. It is a very nice yeah. brush. And really enjoying, I'm, I'm being cautious of not going over the, the brown line. It's a fun exercise. And I'm just going to do that all the way around the edge. Get oh, all beautiful. over the table. Oh, it's very festive. Yes. So it's, it's sort of framing it, and then you still have that glistening behind, just that hint of it. Oh, it's very pretty. Right? Yes. So... I'm thinking, ah, okay, well, what do I do? I just think I'm going to go back and emphasize those orbs like Maria did in her previous tile and just puddle a little bit on each one to make those like a lovely gold necklace around there. Right? Mm -hmm. So I've used everything except my uh, white jelly roll. So I'm going to use that to put my chop in one of these orbs. And it took a bit of coaxing because I had all this chalk and gold and um, eventually got it to come out. But it, it took a little bit of uh, um, doing those strokes multiple times. 
So you'll, you'll discover that some of them, um, the materials like one prefers to go over the other one in a particular sequence. Beautiful. And then I thought, ah, I want that just a little bit toned down. So I grabbed a, um, my brown chalk, just touched it ever so. And sort of taking off there, a little airplane. <laughs> um, one of the things that we always encourage you to do is to rotate your tile, look at it from different angles, pick it up, hold it at arm's length, look at it this way and that, and you'll always see new things and appreciate it. So thank you so much for spending another time with us. This was awesome. See you I soon. learned something from this too, Rick. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Thank okay. you. Bye now. Bye.